Blizzard North began developing Diablo, the team mainly used Judeo-Christian mythology as its reference point, but the lore of the series has now expanded to include nods of many different beliefs and legends, drawing on fates that still exist today and some that have not existed for thousands of years. Still, there are plenty of biblical allusions to be found. Diablo 3's Leia shares her name with Jacob's wife in the book of Genesis, Archbishop Lazarus alludes to the man who Christ resurrects in the Gospel of Luke, and Baal, one of the three prime evils, is a reference to Baal, an ancient god from the Middle East whose followers can be found tempting God's prophets in both the Bible and the Quran. Now I know what many of you are thinking, that somehow I left out Deckard Cain, one of the series' most well-known characters, but surprisingly, Cain is not a reference to Genesis' first murder at all, but the result of a contest run by PC Gamer in 1996. A father submitted his infant son's unique name to the publication It was chosen as the winner. The family even received a copy of the game, some memorabilia, and a note from Diablo 3 producer Bill Roper that read, Congratulations! Your postcard has been chosen as the winner in PC Gamer's Name in the Game contest for Diablo by Blizzard Entertainment. As you will notice, the town elder near the fountain located in the center of Tristram is your namesake. At that point, not even the developers knew that the character would go on to appear in every Diablo game as well as Diablo role-playing games and tie-in books. The real Deckard Cain is now almost 20 and resides in South Dakota. Another instance of the Diablo series finding inspiration from Middle Eastern culture is the Dune Dervish. Although it may seem like a fairly common video game enemy, its name and concept is actually a reference to the followers of the strict Sufi path found in the Islamic faith. Dervishes are well known for their Sema ceremonies where they fall into a trance as they dance and whirl around for hours without stopping in an attempt to achieve religious ecstasy. This practice is what inspired the creature's constant spinning and whirlwind attack. It's obvious that Blizzard dug deep into religious history when creating the world of the series, and there are many small details that even hardcore players may not have picked up on. In Diablo lore, Anu was the first creature in all of time, his death leading to the creation of heaven and hell as well as angels and demons. In the real world, Anu is the name of a god worshipped by the Sumerians and the Babylonians and is believed by some historians to be one of the first gods worshipped in known history. There are also demons named after the Egyptian god of harvest, Renanutet, also known as Ernutet, and the East Semitic god Asur that appears throughout the series. Not every creature is inspired by religious history, there are a few things pulled from legends as well. One of the main antagonists, Mephisto, is an allusion to Mephistopheles, who came from the Faust legend and went on to be a huge part of German folklore, eventually becoming synonymous with the devil in that region. Another big example is the evil warlock brothers, Enyo, Pemfredo, and Dieno. They are known as the Eye of Grey, and their names are all slightly modified versions of the Grey Sisters of Greek mythology, a trio of witches who had one eye to share between the three. Many fans believe that the game's city of Chaldeum was inspired by Constantinople. Now known as Istanbul, both cities were world centers of trade and connected the west to the east. The most notable similarity though is the architecture. Chaldeum's epic structures borrow a lot from the look of Constantinople during the Ottoman Empire. There's even a few more modern references found in this series. The item description text for the one-handed monster hunter sword warns, be wary when you fight monsters, lest you become one. This is a quote from Friedrich Nietzsche, the influential German philosopher and author. And lastly, the vault sentry Cornelius Vanderbilt is thought to be a name modified from Cornelius Vanderbilt, an incredibly wealthy railroad tycoon in the 1800s. Do you know some Diablo historical or literary references we didn't cover here? Share them in the comment section below and you might include them in a future episode. If you like this show and its format, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. If you've enjoyed listening to my voice and would like to hear more, well, you can. I'm Kruparian, and you guys can find me at Kruparian on Twitter or among the other many places on the internet, youtube.com slash Kruparian.